Okay, suppose we want to find the value of cosine of x minus y. Uh, we're given that tangent of x equals negative 7 over 12, cosine of y equals 2 over 5, and we know that x and y are both in quadrant 4. So the first thing I'm going to do is just expand out cosine of x minus y, again using our, uh, the identity that we have. So cosine of x minus y, it says is going to be cosine of x times cosine of y. Again, if there's a negative in between, we use a positive sign. So sine x and sine y. All right, um, we're given uh, at least a couple of the, you know, at least one of the values. We're given cosine of y, but we don't know cosine x, sine x, or sine y. Uh, so we have to figure those out. All right, so a couple different ways to go about doing these. Uh, First off, maybe to figure out the value of sine y. So if we want to figure out what sine of y is equal to, recall we've got our identity that says cosine squared y plus sine squared of y equals 1. Well, cosine of y, we're given a value for that. We're given that that's 2 fifths. So I can use this identity to simply solve this for sine. Okay, so 2 fifths squared, that's 2 over 5 times 2 over 5, that'll give us 4 over 25, plus sine y squared equals 1. I can subtract 4 over 25 from both sides. Uh, you can think about, you know, 1 over 1, that's 25 over 25. So 25 minus 24 will be 21 over 25. We can take the square root of both sides. Again, we've got to stick a positive or a negative on one side or the other. So I can break up the square root of 21 over 25 as the square root of 21 over 5. And again, in this case, we were told that uh, our, our angle y was in quadrant 4. And in quadrant 4, um, both sine and cosine are negative. So we'll have to use the negative square root of 21 over 5 for the value for sine y. All right, so, uh, so now we know, we know our value for sine y. Let's see, uh, so we've got cosine x, cosine y, plus sine x times sine y. Let's see, we now, we know our, our value for sine y. We said we would have to use the negative square root of 21 over 5. So there we've got negative square root of 21 over 5. Let's see, we were given the value for cosine y. Okay, so we still don't know cosine x. Um, cosine y, we're given that that's 2 fifths. We also still don't know the value for sine x, so I'm just kind of filling in what we know at this point. But we know that tangent of x equals negative 7 over 12. And what I'm going to use is I'm just going to use a little right triangle now. So, so here's our angle x. And again, yeah, you know, uh, one of these are negative, but that's simply because our angle is in quadrant 4. When you make your right triangle, just label everything, um, you know, with positive links here. So uh, tangent is opposite, which is 7, over adjacent, which is going to be 12. We would have to figure out the, uh, the hypotenuse using Pythagorean theorem. So 12 squared plus 7 squared, uh, maybe we'll call that h for hypotenuse. Uh, that's going to be the hypotenuse squared. Well, 12 squared is 144. 4 squared, excuse me, 7 squared is 49. Let's see, 144 and 49, that's going to give us 193 equals h squared. So we can take the square root of both sides uh, and get that h equals the square root of 193. Uh, okay, so this is going to be equal to the square root of 193. Yuck, uh, does this simplify down nicely? Um, it could very easily. Uh, the square root of 193, maybe that's prime, maybe it's not. We'll think about that here in a moment. Um, but the main idea is from this triangle now, um, we can read off the value of cosine x and sine x. 
So cosine x, again, is just going to be, uh, so cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, which will be the square root of 193. Now we have to be a little careful because um, we also have to think about the sine. And again, this is in quadrant 4. And in quadrant 4, cosine is negative. So that means cosine of the angle x will be negative 12 over the square root of 193. Likewise, we can get the value for sine x by doing the same thing. So sine of x, again, it's going to be negative because it's in uh, quadrant 4. Um, sine is going to be the opposite uh, over the hypotenuse. So we'll simply get that sine x equals negative 7 over the square root of 193. And now um, we're basically in a position to evaluate this. So we now know our value for cosine x. We said that's negative 12 over the square root of 193. We can multiply that by 2 over 5. And then we can add to that our value for sine x, which we said is negative 7 over the square root of 193, times sine y, which we figured out was the square root of 21 over 5. And now, um, you know, it's just a matter of cleaning this up a little bit. I may uh, leave this here as an exercise. Negative 12 times 2, that's negative 24 over 5 times the square root of 193. Um, let's see, we've got a negative and a negative, so that would make a positive. 7 times the square root of 21 over 5 times the square root of 193. Well, hey, we've got our common denominator. Uh, let's put the positive part first. The 7 square root of 21 minus 24 over 5 times the square root of 193. And now just sort of, uh, you know, this 193 factor, um, and let's see, off the top of my head, it certainly could, um, let's see, so 3 doesn't go into it, 3 would go into 180, uh, but not uh, 193, let's see, so 5 clearly doesn't, let's see, what about 7, um, so let's see, um, does 7 go into 193, so let's see, 2, that would be 14, that would be 53, and 7 doesn't go into 53 evenly, so 7 won't go into it. Uh, 9 doesn't go into it. Um, let's see, I don't think 11 would. We would need another 83, so it looks like to me 193. You know, you can keep playing with factors. Um, maybe this uh, factors down and reduces a little bit. Uh, my hunch is that it doesn't, so I think I'm just going to leave it right there um, and call it a day. So again, you could make a little factor tree for 193 just to reduce it down, or you know, approximate the square root of 21, plug it into a calculator, same thing with the square root of 193, and you'll have your solution in that case.